I'll give you the TLDR right now. If you liked The Witcher, then you will like Cyberpunk. You're welcome. You know, to be honest with you, I wasn't going to do a spoiler-free review on Cyberpunk, partly because they're kind of inconclusive. You can't really say much of anything, so you have to be kind of vague and just literally give out your opinion and that's it. But then I consider how many people got the game on something like PS4 and then immediately asked for a refund as soon as it was available, and then I considered the multitudes of people that were influenced by those people and said, nah, I'm waiting a year. By the way, my heart goes out to you guys, not just because of the refund thing, but also because... Man, I mean, it's gonna be hard to stick spoiler-free for a year, so good luck with that. So in case you lost your internet connection for the past eight years, Cyberpunk 2077 is the latest RPG from CDPR, short for CD Projekt Red, the guys who made The Witcher, and it has a, you guessed it, Cyberpunk setting. I mean, it's a contender for worst named game of the year, Cyberpunk 2077, that's like saying fantasy anno domini. Psychological thriller, The Reckoning, part two. I will say this, Cyberpunk's main job is to immerse you into that world and into that setting, so it's a pity that the game wasn't given like another year to marinate, because when it comes to immersive sims, polish matters, Polish polish, in this case, every bug, every minor error, a floating cigarette, a character animating the wrong way, every glitch in the Matrix takes you out of the experience. It makes you feel like the guy who's auditioning stage actors for a performance and uh, he gets really hyped for this one person who's like mind-blowingly awesome, but then he makes a mistake and then he makes another mistake and then he gets out of it and then he says, sorry, sorry, I'll just go from the beginning and the whole thing just breaks down and it goes instantly from like Ian McKellen to your grandson's nativity play and you just go, you were the one. You were the one. And to be clear, I didn't get many immersion-breaking bugs, but at the same time, I can understand the people who maybe bought this on something like the PS4 and had their first playthrough spoiled by one too many glitches. But bugs aside, they did their best to immerse you and ease you into this role of V. Apart from the <laughs> and from the third-person camera while driving, there are no third-person cutscenes or scripted events or cinematics that wrest control from you or separate you from V in any Anyway, they go out of your way to allow you to move around even in conversations and, and express yourself as an actor would because an actor just gets free reign of the stage or the scene that he's in and he gets to pace around, he gets to look, he gets to like maybe linger a bit before responding and you can do all of that. It just feels more immersive as a result of you being considered less like a viewer in, during a cutscene and more like an actual actor who's partaking into the the proceedings, who's creating the story along with the developers, which is really neat. Like if you move too far away from the NPC you're speaking with, the, they'll comment like, uh, uh, okay, where you going, man? Like, come on. I'll, I'll, sure, I'll just wait here. Like, you go grab a talk or something. We'll continue when you're done, which sometimes does not work in the game's favor. It just seems weird. But I mean, don't do that. Just don't do stupid shit. Like the game can't be accused of not being immersive enough when the player basically behaves like a jackass. You know, jumping up and down on the furniture while NPCs are desperately trying to deliver exposition to you. You know who you are. But yeah, it's all about allowing you to immerse yourself into that role. And while I love Half-Life, I'm kind of sick of people over-glorifying that overdone trope of the silent protagonist. It was fine in the original Half-Life as a product of its time, but it's a bit more out of place in Half-Life 2, where there's more talking than before, and therefore a mute with a gun feels that much more out of place. There's a bit of a tangent, but the entire premise of Half-Life 2 is built on the fact that Gordon cannot express himself and tell his allies what he's been through that would clear up so many confusions right off the bat. Or even games like Dishonored 1 where the loyalists keep sending Corvo on these suicide missions to assassinate and or capture people and Corvo never expresses anything about that. He's just like, okay, fine, I'll do it. But back to Cyberpunk. Obviously, it's best played on PC. If you don't have a good enough one, try GeForce Now or something like Stadia. It's pretty cheap. Yes, there are occasional long wait times, but you get to play the game the way it was meant to be played. Ultra high settings. I tried GeForce Now and it was seamless. No lags, no nothing. So yes, best played on PC, and I should point out that I don't have the International Space Station as my personal computer. As a matter of fact, my PC has been Frankenstein together by parts that were either bought, borrowed, or gifted, and I run the game on the lowest settings available, and I still never experienced a single game-breaking bug or crash. And by the way, even on low settings, the game looks better than most other games on ultra high. At the time of recording, the game is still not back on the PS Store, so they're working on it, but but at the same time, don't expect this thing to run on last-gen consoles as good as it runs on current-gen or PC. Because frankly, the tech is limited and outdated and quite ancient, and consoles are just 
dumb. PC Master Race for the win. To be honest with you, based on what the devs were going for, this game probably should have come out in 2030 or something like that on some advanced like VR tech, like the next generation of VR. Imagine how cool it would be to basically partake in a brain dance about a game that's about brain dances. I have a hard time believing that this wasn't always intended to be first person, like it wasn't built from the ground up to be this. From what I read, they only really decided halfway through development to make it first person. They were sort of like oscillating between first and third person and couldn't make up their minds. It just seems like, honestly, the only way this game would work is in first person. Because as soon as you exit physically, exit V, and you have an over-shoulder, over-the-shoulder cam or isometric or whatever it may be, the immersion is lost and you no longer feel as connected physically to the character of V and therefore the plot, without spoiling, doesn't affect you as much. The plot kind of hinges on... God, how do I say this without spoiling? In order for the plot to work, it all hinges on you being attached to the protagonist in a way that you are attached to yourself in real life and not in a way that you are attached to an existing character. Forming a bond with Luke Skywalker feels intimate, but it's no Nowhere near as intimate as the bond that you share with yourself. And that's what the game hinges on. Let's talk about visuals briefly because the cinematographer deserves a fucking Academy Award. The way some of the scenes are lit and the characters and some of these shots and the composition. I can't spoil anything but it's just it's it's that much harder because again they give you the freedom to move the camera around so they're not telling you like look at this wonderfully composed shot that we prepared for you but they kind of account for it Anyway, they point you in the right direction, and even if you move around a bit, it's still amazing. The acting and the mocap are on point, like there's all sorts of neat bits of subtlety, like a, a, a character, again without spoiling, just twitching nervously or moving his leg, like restless leg syndrome while he's on, a, in on an important meeting. Another character's body language goes totally haywire in another scene after doing something horrible. is just acted in a very, very believable way, not to mention that the, the expressions are some of the most lifelike that I've seen in any game. It puts The Witcher to shame. The Witcher 3 was good, but you know, like with the benefit of hindsight, after playing through this game, there were parts of The of the Witcher where it would kind of break immersion, where you could tell they ran out of pre-scripted animations and you, they were just using the same one over and over again, inevitably in a big RPG like that. Like Mass Effect does this as well. You like start to notice the same little micro-expressions happening on all the characters. I didn't get any of that here. It's just every character feels totally distinct. That jolly system that they got going, worth every penny. Voice cast, stellar. Both male and female V do a great job. Female V in particular, I feel like, displays a broad range of inflections that evoke a lot of emotion. I was really, I was kind of conserved when I started my second playthrough as female that she was gonna come across as the tomboy no matter what. I do, or no matter what the situation or conversation, even though I played some, I played the Corpo Origin, because she kind of sounds like she naturally has a, a boyish, youngish voice to her. But I'm pleased that that was not the case. As the game progresses, she goes seamlessly from hard ass tomboy to funny, sexy, vulnerable, and everything in between. Characters feel real, they're less uh, gimmicky, more three dimensional, less of a one trick pony, more like real people. They're like, they're kind of like icebergs. A lot of their personality is hinted at more than shown or told. There's really only two ways of making great characters. One of them is the Bioware way, where you bestow a gimmick on each particular character. So like, for example, a religious assassin or murderous doctor. You know, that seems interesting and kind of build the entire character around that concept. Or you go for the more realistic approach of just writing people, like as people are in real life. Like not all people are so distinctly about one thing, but there is enough personality beneath the surface to get you hooked on them, get you attached to them. And yeah, the characters are very much appropriate for a noir setting. You've got a porno editor with uh, artistic aspirations. You've got a cop who got suspended for actually trying to be a cop classic. You've got the, uh, the the towering merc with a heart of gold. You've got a three-faced dame that keeps doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. A charismatic but narcissistic prick who straddles the line between anarchist and idealist. I could go on. Speaking of characters, one of the best characters is the city itself. Feels grandiose, oppressive, beautiful in a twisted way, imposing and toxic. You know, the contrast between the tall, impressive buildings and the outlandishly dressed, glossy pedestrians and the, all the shops and the cool cars and all that 
Contrast that with the uh, the dirt and the grime, heaps of trash, homeless bums, omnipresent, over-sexualized ads. It all contributes to make Night City not only feel like this real place, like this believable depiction of what the future might actually look like for us, but it also exposes Night City for what it truly is. A trap. A very large, elaborate, worm-on-a-hook baiting people to try their luck at the American dream. Much like a casino baits its customers with promises of winning it big when everyone knows or should know that at the end of the day, the house always wins. And while we're on the subject of characters, I mean... <laughs> We gotta talk romances. And here I will admit, Bioware kind of spoiled me and a lot of you who've played their games because there you have the pick of the litter. There are always so many options to choose from in Bioware games that you really feel kind of like uh, the owner of a harem. Call me MC Harem Daddy. But after finishing Cyberpunk the first time around, I wikied quickly to see what else, what other options there were, and I was like, that's it? Huh. It seems like they could have done more. It seems to me like they maybe wanted to do more but ran out of time, which is kind of like a running theme for this game. But on the plus side, they definitely did focus on quality over quantity because every one of these romances feel like... Again, they feel real, for lack of a better word. A lot of work went into making these characters likable and relatable and making you want to get to know them and have a relationship with them and it shows like even for the characters that you can romance but don't want to you feel by the end that you've truly befriended them and want what's best for them you want to share a beer a handshake a hug with them because again they feel like real people they went with quality over quantity and i'm all for that sex scenes were tasteful and innovative dare i say they didn't feel like these things usually do in rpgs like just taking two ken dolls and rubbing them against each other they also didn't feel gratuitous at all they found the middle ground and again, they put a lot of work into this mocap. Like even romancing as a dude, like in my second playthrough, like my first playthrough was male, my second playthrough was female, and I wanted to romance the guy as female, and I was, I was kind of like nervous a bit, thought it was going to be weird, but it wasn't weird at all. Like it was very well handled, very tastefully handled. As a side note, while we're still on characters, I want to say I really like the way they did AI in this game. Like less Skynet instant self-aware death switch and more her. Does that make sense? No, of course not. Let me elaborate. Sci-fi films have this history of overstressing the the moment, you know, when AI becomes self-aware and as soon as it becomes self-aware, like truly sapient and conscious of itself it will like destroy humanity instantly that would be its first and last thought how could it think of anything else literally other than destruction whereas if you watch a movie like her yes that's the title with Joaquin Phoenix, it's more like a gradual awakening and 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 ascension to omniscience into a higher plane of of cyberspace essentially and that's more what this game portrays it's more of a gradual evolution to self-consciousness and omniscience and less oh no skynet has become self-aware and the first thing it decides to do is to nuke the northern hemisphere combat is great i found the guns to be very nice and punchy it makes you feel powerful the melee weapons less so seriously the melee weapons are kind of like just like hack like hack like the sound effects aren't there they don't the foley doesn't really support it in the same way that the it supports the the, the ranged combat gameplay wise there's nothing wrong with them you can make some really sick builds but in terms of punch in terms of satisfaction 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 they're just kind of last gen and this again would have probably have been polished had they more time and even this is kind of like I, I acknowledge that i'm biased here i'm probably spoiled by games like dishonored because i mean dishonored specializes in being an action stealth game the entirety of the game is built around this concept of you being stealthy and yes you can go out of stealth and you can kill enemies that way but the game like the core con the core pillar and tenet of the game is stealth and there the, thus there are particular kill animations and stuff that just cyberpunk lacks because cyberpunk is trying to cater to being so many other things on top of that and that's fine again i have no problem with the melee combat per se i'm just like in cyberpunk 2 whenever it comes out because it will come out based on the sales that is one of the areas that i think could stand to be improved hacking is overpowered it's really fun but it's really broken like you can stare an entire room of enemies to death you can just mo it's it's hard to believe that something like that would actually exist but of course in that universe it does i was two-thirds into my second playthrough specializing as a hacker and i was mo Going through entire armies of Saka ninjas when I realized there was this whole tab full of quick hacks that I never clicked on. There was like, whoa, this is where all the fun stuff was hiding. I went from pro hacker 
to God. And there's some really fun ones like Cyber Psychosis, which is essentially like a berserk spell where you turn enemies against each other instantly. So yeah, hacking's busted, but at the same time, it's hard to imagine how they could have done it better than that. Like trying to make it more complicated than this is probably not the case. It would become tedious and like too many numbers. There's already a mini game, which by the way, the mini game is awesome. Like finally, a, a mini game that's not a, a Sudoku ripoff or anything like cheap or trite. It's just challenging enough, but also fast enough that it doesn't get old and you do it quickly and the merriment of those two things makes for a good mini game. Soundtrack is dope. It's impressive to note just how many tracks they ended up making for this thing and how many artists they ended up hiring. A lot of high quality tracks, great variety, lots of influences. There's a couple tracks that uh, are like homages to Nine Inch Nails, some that are obviously Rage Against the Machine in nature. And it's very believable in the context of that essentially post-apocalyptic future where tensions are at an all-time high and people are full of rage and, and they have all this bottle up rage against corpos in the world and their lives. Rock provides a release for all that. It provides a way for people to de-stress and to stick it to the man, at least in their own heads. But the soundtrack is also very believable in the context of our own future because, you know, trends are recurring. So it's possible that this current wave of cutesy, overproduced EDM music and shallow trap will be succeeded by a new wave of rock punk industrial you know genres with a lot of grit some of the tracks ended up being iconic so much so that i go to bed with them in my head and i wake up with them they remind me of games like need for speed underground or hot pursuit 2 you know the old one which had some of the best soundtracks out there as far as i'm concerned and i think that this game pretty much earns a spot among those. The rest of the music, like the score and all that, is, I would say, an essential component of the game. Almost every scene falls flat once you remove the audio, <laughs> particularly the music. There's this abundance of unnerving drone sounds, kind of like that just heightens the level of tension, takes it up to 11. They get you into it, but it also tires you out by the end of the game. Like after playing 50 to 100 hours, it can get a bit tiresome. And that's partly the point, I feel, because at the end of the day, this is the sonic expression of the oppressive, suffocating Night City. So it's fitting. But I want to double down on the point of tension because this game is a masterclass of tension particularly great at building tension without firing a single shot and that in itself deserves praise and the game makes it very clear early on that you are not special not in the way that other games make you feel they don't they don't pamper you you're not savior of the universe you're not a, a uber monster slayer you're not some long forgotten god or, or or a peasant who actually inherited the genes of the god of the world or something like that and rises up you're just a dude and you're in way over your head tangling with the forces that be and you might actually perish if you make the wrong choice it it successfully sells you that tension there is so much stuff in this game there's quests jobs relationships cars clothes weapon accessories cyber enhancements by the end i felt like a real freaking gold digger like a real money hungry cunt because i wanted to buy so much stuff also i finally understood what it's like to be a woman in a clothing store because <laughs> as soon as i started playing female <laughs> the race was on to find the perfect outfit that looked the best on her body and her body type and that turned out to be like 10 different outfits that I'd cycled through at a moment's notice. And I got so freaking obsessed, you know, against my better judgment that after every mission, I would check all the clothing stores just on the off chance that they have this new piece of clothing that I've never seen before that I had somehow missed that could make this outfit work. Like these pants with the beige shirt. No, 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 no. Try it the other way around, which, yeah. I don't know how you girls keep it together, but I actually recommend playing the game this way as opposed to falling into the usual RPG trap of mismatched clothes for the sake of stats. Like, armor doesn't matter that much, so, you know, might as well look good. Perk system is deep and offers many possibilities, so much so that when you first open up the trees, you're like... The game awards many points, which is great because it allows you to try multiple play styles within the same playthrough without having to start a new character. The cyber enhancements alone give you like a plethora of options from, you know, the iconic Mantis Blades down to like improved titanium fists called Gorilla Arms, which allow you to grind enemies' teeth into a fine powder with just one punch. <laughs> You've got the monowire, which is which is essentially like a lightning whip, but that wasn't enough. You can literally mount 
a mini rocket launcher in your forearm, which, by the way, one-shots you if you get too close while you fire it. I swear, V takes like 500% extra damage from anything that explodes, like cars that blow up, grenades, your own freaking grenades, your own rocket launcher. You're just allergic to grenades, and that sounds like I'm joking, but I'm not. Itemization is... Uh, it's what you'd expect in a modern game of this type. I wasn't a fan of it in The Witcher 3, and I'm not really a fan of it now. It's with the whole, like, simplified DPS system, where one item has crit chance, crit damage, and chance to shock, and the other one has crit chance, crit damage, and chance to combust. Hmm, tough choice. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, you're just gonna pick the, the item which has the green arrow up as opposed to the red arrow down, which is simplistic and defeats the purpose of itemization. I'm also not a fan of having the same item in different tiers of quality and calling it different items. Like I have green unity, blue unity, purple unity, and oh look, it's a orange legendary unity, which is the same thing, it's just got better stats. That said, there are a few unique, like truly unique weapons in the game that have unique properties in their own right, so that is nice. On the plus side, the game does a really good job of signaling really important choices to you. Like it gives you the option, it gives you about two or three opportunities to back out of a choice or to confirm your choice. Oh, we are about to go behind this person's back. Are you sure you want to do that? Same with the romances. You generally get several prompts, like several triggers to trigger the romance. Like you'll get the little option with the lips on it. And I like that kind of approach because a lot of times in these games you choose something without realizing how monumental it is or because the paraphrasing is bad. And it's like it's it's a final choice. You can't back out. You have to load a game. But I like this kind of approach, particularly when it comes to the endings. Like when you choose whatever ending you want for yourself, you really get to mull it over and consider all the possibilities several times before you the game is like, okay, are you sure? Are we sticking to this path? Is everybody happy? Are we going forward? It's kind of like the equivalent of watching a play and then having someone drop down in the middle of the stage getting up and saying like we're about to enter the second act if you want a potty break now's the time driving is impressive especially coming from a dev whose only prior experience with racing and driving is animating a horse a lot of people think that driving is clunky i don't think it's clunky i think some cars are clunkier than others or worse to handle that's the point of having variety you can't have 60 cars all driving the same i also think people do the thing where they they move the mouse while they also drive using the keyboard which don't do that because as soon as you move the mouse in third person, it stops auto tracking the car. So when you get into the car, just take your hand off the mouse, do yourself a favor. And the cars are beautifully designed. Like some of them look better than their real life counterparts. Like the Type 66 Avenger, which is this futuristic take on a Mustang, sort of. That car is just, oh, c'est magnifique. Racing quests were a lot of fun. Looked like something straight out of the first Fast and Furious movie. Like I instantly felt transported in the middle of a street race. I actually did this little ritual. Whenever I would buy a new car, I would get into it, keep the dashboard cam on, and just look around and analyze like the dashboard itself and, and the, the leather seats or whatever. That is the one con though, the dashboard cam. Like for some cars it's fine, but for others it is literally undrivable. Like it's so far up that you can't see a goddamn thing. It's like trying to deflect laser blasts with the blast shield on when you're not a force sensitive. It's fine with most cars, but with some I literally had to switch to third person view. And I'm this is coming from a dashboard fanatic. Like I always play my racing games on the dashboard cam. There's a ton of foreshadowing throughout the game. And I found myself constantly looking back and remembering so that's what that old quest was about. Ah, oh, that's what the twins at the... Ah, oh, okay, I get it. And the quests really stuck with me. Some are endearing, some are terrifying, and some just make you ponder things endlessly. It's great. It's amazing. And again, just like in The Witcher 3, there's plenty of Easter eggs to be discovered, which will keep you coming back over and over again to replay the game, or just watching someone else on YouTube who's discovered them. Like, there are channels out there who specialize in discovering obscure secrets about The Witcher 3. Even today, they're finding new stuff, so I'm sure that's going to be the case with Cyberpunk going forward. But let's talk about the story a bit. I saved it for last because I feel like it beats a lot of high-budget films. When all is said and done, it's what will keep you coming back, or at least thinking about the game, long after you've finished it. It's that kind of story where, you know, it, it sticks in your head, you continue to debate it with your friends long after you've finished it. The devs said the story is not about saving the world, it's about saving yourself. And boy, were they not kidding. Yes, it is about saving yourself on multiple levels. It's a story about identity more than anything, as multiple characters within the story try to figure out who and what they are and what the limits of their identity are which of your decisions are truly your decisions and which of your decisions are influenced by a 
subliminal outside force. Even the city's history is presented in a murky fashion, such that you can interpret many of the events and characters one of two ways, and the game lets you decide for yourself how you view or how you see those events and characters. Death is another big theme, more overtly so, because many characters talk about death, and this might come across as a spoiler, so if you want to be squeaky clean, skip past this sentence. But it's one of the few games that has the balls to make you, the player, ponder their own mortality. In a medium that has traditionally been dominated by power fantasies where the player gets to step into the shoes of some demigod or indeed an actual god, and smacks everything like a pimp smacks his newest piece of merchandise, it's refreshing to see a game dev take a more intimate, mature path and, uh, you know, empower the player, sure, but also make them feel vulnerable. But let's talk about the cons, because every game has them, and Cyberpunk is no exception, you know, bugs notwithstanding. Biggest one, by far, no walk toggle for keyboard. Unacceptable. Un inexcusable. Like, patch that shit in immediately. This might sound like a surprise in 2021, but some people actually prefer keyboard and mouse over controller. Particularly for, you know, a shooter. Armor seems to be useless. You know, there are countless forum posts from people who have stacked the highest possible numbers of armor and still get three-shotted. Whether that's because armor doesn't work properly or because the enemy scaling is exceedingly brutal, the effect is the same. And it's a shame because some builds are effectively locked off and you're forced to go into some variation of a glass cannon build just to survive. I mostly play on easy difficulty, yeah, yeah, laugh it off. It's not because I don't like a challenge, it's because I don't enjoy getting three-shotted, and also because I don't want to fall into the trap of mismatched clothes for the sake of stats. The game keeps advertising that in Night City looks are everything, and I actually wish that that were so. I wish that the looks somehow mattered more than the actual stats. The fistfights are horseshit. The minigame is like, it's not even a minigame, it's just like, Melee combat, but with a specific behavior from the AI. Enemies, again, three-shot you, blocking doesn't mitigate any damage, and the enemy's blow seem to connect with your face even if you're several light years out of harm's way. And all of this encourages you to cheat the system and just stun lock the opponent and just beat them, keep them into a corner, because if they get a reprieve, you're dead. Minimap seems to be optimized for exploring the city with a kind of like mid to slow vehicle, like the turns appear to an advance if you have a really, really slow vehicle, like your starting vehicle, and they appear way too late if you have a supercar, resulting in a lot of missed turns, accidents, and just emergency braking. There's already mods fixing this, just that just make the map show more of the city so that you can see the turns faster. I really hope that they're going to patch this into the game. Cops are less of a feature governed by systems and mechanics and more of a stop killing innocent people, you psycho warning. As in they literally teleport indoors right behind you with a powerful gun and a powerful erection, both pointed at your ass. And that's fine, I don't expect the cops to be a big part of this game like some other people do, but I'm still logging this as a con because sometimes the cops attack you for no reason. That is right. Sometimes you're just out to kill murderers and rapists and you still get one-shotted by this cop that happened to spawn behind you because reasons. And yes, there are bugs, but they weren't deal breakers for me. Obviously, I'm speaking only from my experience, but I had a smooth one. The one thing I desperately want them to fix is the sound glitches. Like when you boot this game on PC, it has, and many people have reported this, something about it pops and clicks in a way that just indicates like the sample rate is not right. A lot of people have suggested reducing the sample rate to like 44.1k I've done that, it's no change. I have found a workaround, but it only works for my particular audio card, which I have an external audio card for making music and blah blah blah, it's not much of a fix for the average gamer. That more than anything I feel they need to look into, because visual bugs I can forgive, but audio? Nay. But again, none of these are deal breakers, and if you're watching this video three months after me posting it, then probably most of these issues are fixed by now. I honestly think this game is 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 seminal and will be remembered as such later down the line with all the expansions and the fixes and the, the patches and free stuff that's going to come. So if you're still on the fence about whether or not you should buy this, don't be, unless the only other game you play is Valorant, in which case you'll probably be confused by the, you know, lack of cartoony graphics or saturated colors, like, who are all these people, what's with all the talking, uh, pass. But barring that category of people, I think this game is a must-play. In the end, Cyberpunk 2077 is nothing more or less than what they initially advertised it as. An experience. It's a unique experience and a thrill ride that... In a world of soulless, empty, designed by committee games, you shouldn't miss. And if you've made it this far into the video, then you either really, really like Cyberpunk or you were really, really mesmerized by the beard. 
Either way, I would like to use this opportunity to do the awkward plug. Because this is first and foremost a music-related channel, I wanted to commemorate the release of this game by releasing a little EP, a little cyberpunk-inspired bit of music. And it's more than just a handful of tracks randomly ordered around. It's more akin to an experience. It's an entity, something that has a beginning, middle, and end. And all the tracks come together to form a cohesive whole and are meant to be listened in a particular order. You're meant to just click play on the first song, sit back, relax, and be taken on a bit of a thrill ride. So if you enjoy the cyberpunk setting or even just, you know, rock, industrial metal, things with a bit more edge to them, consider clicking on the Bandcamp link below and checking it out. So what do you guys think? Have you played it? Have you not played it? Are you excited? Are you disenfranchised? Are you indifferent towards the game? Subscribe! There's more cyberpunk related stuff and more music related stuff coming soon. Like the video, and I'll see you guys later. Peace!